was originally going to direct the film? Mark Scorsese! <laughs> Toby Hooper. Correct. <laughs> What was the original name for the name's character, Trash? Go for it. Legs! Got it. <laughs> so they know they're, well, at least you guys know it. And she's still got this one. That's yeah. true. They're rocking it. She yeah. knows it's everything. Yeah. They're in show for one million dollars. You know what Spider's original name is? What was Spider's original name? Really? Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. I have, I have a script that was your character's name. I don't know, I'm yeah. saying yeah. 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 Yes. I do. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. So I guess we'll start with the basic question. How did you guys, except for Mikey, because he doesn't know, how did you guys get involved in uh, Return of the Living Dead? Yeah. Okay. Oh, audition, audition for it when you didn't smoke it. That was it. What did you smoke? Hey, what? Cast director. I got an audition. I was, like I said, I was homeless. Right. You know, I was always like, uh, you know, I had got an agent where I jumped off a bus and jumped in somebody else's audition, stole their resume, wanted their name, and I put my name on it, and got, it, got the lead, and then I went in there and got an audition for them. They said, Return to Living Dead. I was like, oh, I don't like Living Dead. And I wanted to do horror movies my whole life, so I went in there and I wasn't going to come out until I had that job. And luckily, by the grace of God, I got it. You worked on production design. Yeah, I was the production designer for the film. And uh, Dan O'Bannon was one of Rob Cobb's best friends. And I was working for Rob Cobb, uh, designing Conan the Barbarian. And Rob would have his parties and invite all his, his, his friends there. And I would usually bring art I was doing outside of Conan and to just get feedback and get uh, opinions from people about what they liked or didn't like about the art. And Dan O'Bannon was always really eager and keen to see whatever I brought. And what I didn't know is that he was considering me to be the production designer for the film, but he wasn't sure whether or not I could handle the high-tech aspects of it. And then one night at one of Ron's parties, I brought in this cover I had done for Alien Worlds comics, and it showed an astronaut sinking into the ground, surrounded by all these little creatures. And Dan looked at that suit, that astronaut suit, <laughs> and said, oh my god, stop and do high-tech. So, when Dan was made the director of the film, he had a very short list of who he wanted to production design the film. His first choice was Bernie Wrightson, who was famous for creating the Swamp Thing, and I was number two. He gave that list to Graham Henderson, our line producer, and Graham looked at the list, quickly did his homework, found out that I had already made several motion pictures, uh, and Bernie had it. And so he lied to Dan, told Dan that uh, Bernie passed on the project, uh, but he's got a deal with him now. Wow. Brian Peckley's guys. Uh Dan O'Bannon discovered me stripping at a very exclusive club. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's called the Stanky Crack Motel. <laughs> uh, I paid him to be in the film. No, I auditioned, I auditioned like everyone else. The only difference with me is he was that naked. I mean, <laughs> But uh, I had brought the project to the attention of my agent because a friend of mine was reading for the part Beverly ended up getting. And um, she showed me the script and I read it and I called my agent and he uh, refused to submit me for the movie because he said I wasn't right for any of the parts and that he wasn't going to embarrass himself and me by submitting me for a movie I had no chance of getting a part of. No, I paid him 10% of what I made on this movie. You're an idiot. He's <laughs> the Here's the good part. He's dead now. <laughs> <laughs> he died a horrible, slow, painful death. Anyway. Uh, 
So my friend who was going in for a callback for the role of Tina took my headshot resume in and gave it to Tom Z. Stokes, our casting director, and said, hey, this is a friend of mine. He's a really great actor. He'd be good for this movie. His agent doesn't think he's right for it, but I tell you, he'd be great. And Stanzi just like called my phone number off my resume and said, oh, I hear you should come in and read for this. So from that point, it became like the normal audition process, but it was a little harder for me to get my foot in the door. He stuck with Stanzi. And he's been scars ever since. Next we have Don Calvin. Don Calvin, ladies and gentlemen. audition than I do. Uh, I, <clears throat> I don't remember it. I remember getting in the room and rapping like crazy, and I never did really audition and read. Did you actually rap? Exactly. You did rap. I did. Get out of here. Well, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> you no, know, I, I, I just, I, I remember, I, did I have the headphones on at the time? Yes. Well, no, that was your idea. I thought I was. That was your idea. I had headphones on, but I think I was listening to something like The Pure. Miguel's 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 I'm doing a pen. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, my hair, you know, I mean, I didn't look anything like I do in the show. And uh, I, I don't even remember how long my hair was. It was just, it was dark. And uh, I think I, I might have had a mustache at the time. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know what won me the part, but I know I did a I think the headphones, you went in with the headphones, Doc. You went in with those headphones, and that was your choice. I remember yeah, you always used to tell me that's right. Story. And I came in, I was like, you know, I think that's what got me the job. Place. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, I don't know what we rapped about, but uh, I, uh, I, I don't even remember if I read the script for it. I think I might have been read it. It was fate. It was fate. Yeah. But it was fate. I did not read. And, uh, but I, I, I believe Dan asked me, uh, you know, if I would, I, I would shave my mustache. And I don't know if he asked me about the hair or not or whether I volunteered. Hey, I said, you know, I'd do it with blonde hair. I don't know. Okay, here's how I remember. Okay, yes. <laughs> I was not worried. You had the job before you even walked through the door. Oh. Dan, Dan showed me footage of you and said, look at this guy. Look at his eyes. He said, I've got to have him right there. I've got to have him oh. <laughs> I, I looked at a lot of your films, and you had that mustache in most of your films. So and when Dan asked if you could lose the mustache, I thought, uh oh, here it comes. And, and your response is, it's off. Yeah, uh, that's what great. a pro. What a pro. Oh, he knew what was the turn